Yo, what's going on, Algebra fam? It's Bosch, and I'm back again with another quick video to help you out with your homework. Uh, the intended audience here is my ninth grade algebra class. However, if you find this relevant to the work you're doing in your class or whatever you're doing and can find this helpful, then great. Uh, so we are currently working through functions, and I assigned a homework assignment where students have to find the zeros of functions and uh, first of all a zero is another way of saying a solution which is another way of saying a root which is another way of saying an x-intercept so all four of those vocabulary phrases are the same thing zeros x-intercepts roots and solutions are all the same thing so what a zero is on a graph is where the graph of a function crosses the x-axis or I should say a graph of a relation because it doesn't actually have to be a function to have a zero. A zero is where a graph crosses the x-axis. It is an x value. Solutions to equations or functions or relations are x values. All right. So there are locations on the graph and all locations have two coordinates one x and one y. If you are finding a zero or a solution or a root or an x-intercept it is an x value only. Now, the y value at a zero is zero. That's why they call them zeros. When y is equal to zero, also the function is equal to zero, the function's output is the same thing as y. I know this is really confusing at this point, probably, but the more we do it, the better I think you'll uh, understand and the more used to it you'll be, hopefully. <laughs> All right. so. Uh, there's a bunch of exercises on finding zeros graphically, algebraically, and using your calculator. I'm going to come back really quick with a uh, algebraic one right after this. Uh, but for now, let's locate the zeros on these graphs, for example. And hopefully this is enough for you to be able to move forward and do your homework if you didn't already know how. It's pretty simple. So like I said before, zeros of functions are x values where the graph is crossing the x-axis. So all you have to do is look at the graph and see where it crosses the x-axis. Record the x value there and that is the zero or solution or root or x-intercept. So here we go. There's three exercises here. At the top left we have this. That's actually a square root relation. It's not a function you could see because everything that is greater than negative four will yield two outputs for each input so it's a relation but that doesn't matter it still has a zero because it still has a location where it's crossing the x-axis right here so what's that point that's the point negative four zero so the zero is located at x is equal to negative four simple as that let's move on to this next one over here we have an upside down parabola or I guess it's still called a parabola so this is a quadratic function and it's crossing the x-axis twice all we have to do is figure out where it's crossing the x-axis what x value and that's it that's our zero or those are our zeros because there's more than one there's one location that crosses the x-axis and there's the other location that crosses the x-axis so those are the two zeros so that's a set of zeros, a set of solutions. In a set, we use curly brackets and we number them in order from least to greatest. So the x value at this first spot here, this first location, is negative 1. So we have x is equal to, I'm going to open up a curly bracket there, negative 1. Also, the value here is 3. So the two zero, forgive my really bad curly brackets, I'm getting used to that too. Uh, the zeros on this graph for this function are negative 1 and 3. Simple. Nice work. Moving on to the last one, we have this nice curve here. This is a polynomial function, and uh, it has a, min a, a relative minimum and a relative maximum. These are just fancy vocabulary words. Uh, we're going to be getting into that a little bit. Uh, it, actually, next week, we sh we're going to start talking about that stuff. So, we want to find the zeros here of this function, look on the graph, locate where it's crossing the x-axis, record the x-values there, and those are the zeros. Simple. So here's one location where the graph crosses the x-axis. There's another, 
and there is another. The x value here, negative 3. The x value here, negative 1. And the x value here is positive 2. So our three zeros are located at, again, this is a set of zeros. So I'm going to use set notation, which has curly brackets, negative 3, negative 1, and 2. And that's all. So that's how you locate zeros on a graph, also known as x-intercepts, also known as roots, also known as, man, just so many words that are the same thing. Solutions. All right, uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you did your homework. I'm sorry I waited till Sunday to put this up. It's pretty simple. I feel like you should have had problems anyway, but here we go. It's on the Internet now. Good luck. Have a good time. Work hard. Be good to the people around you. I'll be right back with the algebraic version of this.